Welcome to Surf Dude. So in this little workshop, what I want to talk about is the 10 top mistakes uh, that beginners make in surfing. Okay, so these are mistakes that um, I've had uh, problems with and other ones were the pretty common mistakes. So let's uh, get started and let's talk, let's talk about the first surfing mistake. So the first one is not paddling enough. This is probably the most common problem that beginners or even intermediates have uh, that you see it every day where they're just not paddling enough. You know, you need to give yourself a bit of time and you need to build up a bit of speed. So when you see that wave coming along and you think that's going to be perfect for me to catch, don't just sit and wait for it to catch you uh, because you're not going to have any speed and you're not going to get onto the wave. Okay, so what you need to do is you need to wait for it to be at least sort of 15, 20 meters away from you. And you need to then start paddling. You need to start paddling quite strong. You need to be centered in the board. Your balance on the boards needs to be central. So you're not too far back and you're not too far forwards. And you need to paddle with long, strong strokes. Okay, and then when that board, when the bottom of that tail gets picked up by the wave, you need to put in those three extra power strokes you need to get your body down on the wave and you need to push just three more strokes and then you'll be in a really good position to be picked up by the wave and then allow you to pop up this is the most common mistake that beginners make when they start to surf especially when they start to break out of the white water okay so beginner mistake number two is moving further and further back okay on the board so this is a common problem again people are catching the wave and what's happening is their nose is diving underneath the water so you're purling basically the nose of the board is going under the water so to compensate for that what beginners do and even intermediates is they move further back on the board uh, the problem with this is that they might still pull, the nose might still duck, and they end up going further back. So the key to this is speed. If you have more speed, the nose of the board will pick up. So paddle stronger. If you're centrally on the board and you are balanced on that board, then you just need to paddle harder to stop that nose from dipping because as the wave picks up the as you as it starts to pick up your nose could go under but if you just raise that chest and you paddle stronger the nose will come back out okay so you can catch it on that point before it goes under the water and pull it up you don't need to move your position that position that you're in when you're actually balanced on the board this way and centrally balanced that will be enough for you to use that on every board that you go on to okay so to stop that nose going down do not try to compensate by going further back on the boards okay now it could be a case that you are too far forwards on the boards so you need to make sure that you're on that balance point normally if you're laying on the board in flat water the nose should be round about three centimeters out of the water so that is point number two. Okay, so mistake number three, telegraph, what I like to call the telegraph pole. Now this is again a common mistake, and we've all made it, we've all been there. Uh, I still do it sometimes. But to avoid this telegraph pole, which is what happens when you pop up on your board and you're basically straight legged on the board, you're like this, yeah? Um, what happens if you have no balance? So as the board moves, you're losing balance and you fall straight in or off, off the back of the board, off the side of the board, sometimes off the front of the board. What you need to do, all you need to do, and this is really easy fix, is when you pop up, keep your knees nice and bent. Not too bent, but just a little bit of flow in those, in those knees. This allows you to push the board out and under you as well so it will give you more balance on the board so to stop yourself telegraph polling boom straight off make sure that you keep your knees nice and bent when you move forwards through it okay so let's look at uh, mistake number four 
So this is um, quite a common one as well. Um, people make their way straight out the back too early. What you need to do is you, when you're a beginner, you need to stay in that white water. You need to be practicing your pop-up. You need to be practicing getting used to standing on the board. You don't need all of the extra technicalities that come into surfing unbroken waves at this point. It is more important for you to actually be in the white water where you can easily get momentum and the board moving um, by paddling white water will hit the back of the board and it will shoot you forwards and that will give you the momentum to then practice your pop up and your stance and getting used to being standing up on a board getting those balance sensors that you can't teach engaged after a while of being on your feet and getting used to the board and practicing just in the white water moving the board around a little bit by tilting back and forwards on your toes and heels you'll then start to get those balance motors that are built into us all activated at that point when you're confident in the white water of course you can start to head out back okay so mistake number five stay between if you're on a lifeguarded beach and i hope if you're learning you are on a lifeguarded beach it's really important that you do stay between the black and the white flags okay that's your surf zone that's where the lifeguards are watching if you get into difficulties surfing can be dangerous waves can be very powerful uh, very unpredictable there can be obstacles in the way such as other beginner surfing body borders, paddle borders, there could be anything in the way. So while you're beginning, I would say, uh, until, until you sort of get to that kind of intermediate stage, just stay, be stay between those black and white flags for your own safety, okay? So this is another one, mistake number six is you are busy watching for that perfect wave to come along and you are ready for it and you can paddle and you can pop up brilliantly but this is a common mistake look at the shore see where your exit is and see where your obstacles are you need to be looking as you're paddling forwards where you have exits to take that wave. Lots of people don't look, they're looking out to sea. A wave comes along, they turn around maybe too late, they paddle, they pop up, and there's someone in front of them. Always look to see where your clear paths are on the wave. I've had it many times where I've had a brilliant right hander, okay? and I haven't looked and then I've looked as I'm paddling and I've gone oh I can't take that right hander because there's so many people in the way I'm not going to get through them so I have to take a left and I take the left and then it just closes out on me the wave just breaks on that side because it was a right hander so if I'd have actually just looked and seen where it was I probably wouldn't have taken that wave I probably would have waited for a left hand to come along or I would have just paddled along to a better position so I could take that if it's a consistent right I could take that consistent right so looking at where people are behind you avoids accidents happening avoids you hurting people especially if you've got a hard board and also means that you will have a nice clear path to be able to do lots and lots of tricks and play around with it. So this is a really important one. Watch your exit and make sure you are not in the way of other surfers. This is just as important when you make your way out back, make sure that you're not in the way of other surfers that could potentially catch a wave in your direction, okay? So that's a big one, I think. Right, so we have um, surfing mistake number seven. Never, ever, ever, hold your board in front of you when you're going into the water this is uh, and i've done it i've done this a few times and i've nearly knocked myself out especially in the more powerful winter waves if a wave even a small wave hits your board if you're holding it in front of you because of the surface area of the board it will be whacked into you 
and knock you over. Always hold your surfboard to the side of you, okay? Whichever way you wanna hold it to the side of you. Lift it out, but never hold it in front of you. This is really important, guys. So I'm trying to give you surfing mistakes here that are some of the less common ones that I think are really important for beginner surfers, and maybe intermediate surfers. Okay, so if you're an older generation of surfers, surfer, and I'd say even if you, any age, actually, you should always warm up before you go surfing. Before you even get in the water, you should do stretching exercises. Uh, you know, they don't have to be long, five minutes, just to warm yourself up, to stretch those shoulders. Look at our fitness guide to see our common um, exercises that will make it much more efficient for you to speed up the time on exercising and then get into the water. You need to be limber. You need to stretch some of those joints that could be pushed in some of the maneuvers that you try to do, or even some of the ways that you fall off the board. You need to be stretched so that you don't hurt yourself. I say this with real importance because I have had injuries because I have not stretched enough and that is the reason why okay so make sure you warm up before you get in the water and afterwards just have a bit of a cool down stretch as well just stretch out those muscles just before you leave the beach to go home all right so really important one so surfing mistake number nine if you're new to surfing if you're a beginner or you're not experienced get a soft board okay get a nice big soft board because you want a softy okay or a foamy people call them um because you know although it looks cool carrying a nice hard board short board uh you're not going to progress you need a big board so you can look at our surfing guide uh, on soft boards and uh, download that cheat sheet if you want to uh because i have a guide of um, what size you need Normally it's about six foot, you need sort of eight to nine foot board, okay? Lots of volume. Uh, this will help you in, in a few ways. Because you haven't built those muscles up for paddling, you're going to um, be able to paddle faster with a soft board. You also, if it hits you or someone else on the soft board, it's not gonna do as much damage because it's soft, okay? So you can have a lot of fun with a soft board and you can even ride fairly big waves like four foot, five foot waves, you know? So soft boards are the way to go when you're a beginner, even to an intermediate. And I use my soft board all the time uh, when there's small wave. <clears throat> and uh, they are pretty cool because it's so easy to paddle, you know? So don't try to look cool surfing you know if you're a beginner surfer get something that's going to work for you to progress you to that next stage before you can jump onto a hardboard and even when you go to a hardboard you want a nice big hardboard you don't want to just jump straight down if you're using a nine foot softy then you can go for a nine foot or eight foot five hardboard and then you know after a while when you get competent you could drop that down to eight foot and progress down don't just go and buy yourself a six foot um fish or something straight away you know just don't don't go and buy that straight away because you're going to it's completely different it's much more unstable uh it's harder to paddle there's other more advanced techniques you've got to learn like duck diving you can once you get up you can turn and move a lot quicker but it's going to be more unstable you need to be building up one that physique to be able to paddle and also that stability those um those kind of balance motors need to be working with you you need to find different pitches and catch it different places away do not jump down to such a low um length board straight away you need to be keeping it big okay so mistake number 10 if you are new to a surf location Definitely talk to the lifeguards or the locals about potential hazards. You know, this does two things. It, the people get to know you, um, you know, so you're making friends, uh, you're finding out the hazards, and you know, those people also know that you're new to the area, so locals will be able to spot you if you're having trouble or you're in the wrong place. So, always a good thing to ask people, and uh, you know, most surfers really want to help each other anyway so that's that's what we do so that is surfing mistake number 10 so hopefully these help you and i'll see you on the next surf video